Again, thank you guys very much for coming. Uh, I'm going to kind of touch a point that's near and dear to me. I, I'm bad with naming, so I called it Strong Nicks because it's supposed to make Nicks stronger. Very straightforward. All right. I think I introduced myself yesterday, but real quick run through. Software engineer, IDF, startups, developer product for Facebook. Big on nonprofits, so I love things like this. I love organizing it. I love seeing people. I love just you know helping out. And Flux now. Share a little uh, of my Nix backstory. I do have to thank my wife for letting me do Nix. About a day after I proposed, I took her to Nix Paris. That's actually intro, but this is Nix Paris. And she's still with me. So that's also a picture of Ryan before the haircut. Other than that, I've been quite busy, so excuse if my uh, deck or presentation is higher. We good? Okay. Excuse if uh, the deck or presentation is a bit uh, chaotic, but uh, yeah, this is a picture of me working on it five minutes ago. But let's let's get into why why I'm here and what I'm talking about. I hope this is good. Okay. So a few key topics I want to discuss: strong NICs, why, what it means, the key areas, and the inflection point. Um, learning from our neighbors. It's another effort that we did as part of the board. And then empowering teams and community power. As I said, I'm really great with names. So excuse them. Why? Why strong NICs? What does it even mean? So NICs over, over a decade ago and since then have solved, has solved many, many different problems for a lot of different engineers. For all of you sitting in this room, it's just technical masterpiece thanks to Ilico and a lot of contributors and members. We've grown, as you've seen in the presentations that we've had in the past few days, we have thousands of contributors, and we have one of the more active open source repositories in the world today. But as our friend who I think did one of the best presentations I've ever seen at Nix yesterday said, we want to give him more friends, right? We want Nix to grow. And we are growing. Just in the last survey, as you've seen also yesterday in some of our presentations, 30% of the community today is com comprised of people that joined just in the past year. And in order to keep that growth, we need to create clarity and confidence across NICS, the community. Um, and I think one example I would like, like to give on the why here is as we grow, the community is going to change, right? It's going to kind of start bringing in the less Nix experts, right? The more new to Nix or completely unfamiliar with the concept where we talked yesterday about the principles of Nix, folks that are software engineers but just have not been exposed to this at all. And while Nix is free, it's open source, it isn't. Every one of you here is paying for it, and everyone that's going to be joining is paying for it. They're paying for it with the risk that they need to kind of take in order to switch their infra, switch their OS, or rely on a new technology. And they're also paying for it with time, right? Obviously, onboarding has been, documentation is a key topic, and there's going to be a good talk about it today. So it's not free. And therefore, the why? We need to either reduce that risk and time, or just make it much more compelling so that they can understand why they're taking that risk. Cool. Lost my mouse. Cool. So first, what does this mean, right? What are the key areas that, that we think we should kind of look into and see how we can strengthen that inflection point, which I'll get to in a second? Number one is increasing our general resilience, right? So when someone's looking at Nix or looking at the community, they're, like I said, taking a risk. And because we're a very kind of lower on the stack level, we're an infra technology, that risk has upstream impact on almost everything they do. So when they look at us, they need to kind of feel confident, not just in the tech itself, but also in the general 
community and you know making sure it's a community that's supportive and and helpful so um, some of the areas that, that we've been thinking about in terms of general resilience has been the fact that the growth will start putting more strain, we'll have more contributors, we'll have more users, we'll have more people asking questions. Um, and some of the areas that we've been looking into has been, I think, things that have been called out, right? RFC, collaboration, general support. Another area of Resilience is that imagine you're an external user, you have no clue what Nix is, you come to nixos.org, you may, might visit, visit our discourse or matrix, and we wanna see how we can provide that clarity, right? We wanna see how we provide both clarity and clear governance, so people know what's going on, they can kind of like understand and have it seem straightforward. So I think this has two facets. Internally to us, it's exposing what the community and the user needs are. We talked about it in terms of like the surveys and the feedback and just making sure that we're doing the right things and prioritizing them. And from them, they're of course prioritizing it correctly. Um, and really showing an external viewer how things are done in Nix. Because when someone comes in, they haven't been to NixCon, they haven't spoken to Elko privately, you know, they haven't interacted with Nixers potentially and just helping them understand that very clearly is gonna be, it's gonna be a focus for us. Externally, it's, again, the things that I mentioned earlier, right? It's helping them jump into Nix, but also reducing the concept and of the risk involved with taking on Nix. Advocating, pretty straightforward. I won't add too much on that. I think it's just making sure that we are all advocates of Nix in the external realm. I think there was a ton of great talks on how we can be better at that. Um, but positioning, I think, you know, we talked a bit about the marketing team. Where is Nix positioned? I'll click through a few pictures later, but when I come today, right, to, to a, let's say, I mean, we're in France, right? We come to like a French restaurant, or let's say we go to a, a crepe place, right? We're going there to get a crepe. They're not advertising the fact that they have like Coke in the fridge. They might have it. Once you get there to get the crepe and you want a Coke, cool, they have it. That's, that's an added value. And I'll touch on that in a second. General ecosystem, I'll talk about that as well. Community is going to change. It's going to grow with people that are outside of this room and they have different perspectives to software engineering, different enthusiasm to software engineering. And we need to see how we can kind of bring them in and embrace them with a warm, warm Nix hug, not a too hot one. Um, and that kind of ties into setting up the newcomers to success. So in terms of positioning, I just found this graphic nice. <coughs> this is the DevOps ecosystem. Be curious to say, where are we? No, 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 no. you need to choose one. Where are we? Like, there's planning and coding, there's building, testing, integrations, there's CI, CD, there's release and deploy, there's operating and monitoring. Nixonator is, is, is pretty on point, right? I mean. <laughs> we're all of it. Now, there's a few analogies I can use, but yesterday we went to a French restaurant and one of the Flox team members really likes trying new things. So we saw in the dessert menu, something called the big Baba plug. We can't force an entire cake down people's throats. People have a view of what they do. They have a view of how they use it. They're used to doing it. They were, they, they taught, you know, they were taught about it in college, in the university. Uh, their friends explained it to them once and forever they don't want to leave it. There's politics in software engineering. For us, maybe less because we're very open source, but once we step outside to the engineers that are working from nine to five and all they care about is being a software engineer in order to come bring a paycheck and then do other things, they have different considerations, right? And this doesn't work. We need to be able to tell them, maybe it's all of it, but we need to be able to tell who's coming to us and then why they should come to us 
in order for them to come in and then go and see, oh, shit, it is all of it. Now I can grow into the rest. This is what I did about five minutes ago. I'm great at drawing. I have lots of skills, guys. You asked about board composition, I'm, I'm the artist. Uh, <laughs> the inflection point. So you've seen this yesterday. We talked about it. <coughs> Excuse me. We're growing 5x in like two years. That's great. But really, this is what's showing us just the beginning of where we're at and kind of where we want to go, right? We want, we want some pitas on the, no, I'm kidding, petabytes on the menu for us here. And the real question is, there's two. What does it look like at the top so we can build, you know, we can work backwards to make sure that we set that up for success? And then along the way, how do we maintain it as a community? Right? So again, this has been seen across like Nix awareness, the fact that 30% are newcomers, um, and then some of the metrics that we shared in the opening keynote yesterday that you've all seen. Now, as I've stated earlier, right, a lot of this growth is going to go beyond this room into people that, that just have different concepts of software engineering than we do, and use it and utilize it for different ways and are more risky or less risky. I would assume off the bat that they're going to be less risky in terms of the risk that they're willing to take. Uh, they're going to be engineers that have less time to dig in, right? They want to take a piece of Nix. They want to go into Nix, but we need to kind of help them do it. And on the other side, you know, the things that we're thinking about, and I would love community right, support and ideation on how we can do it is <clears throat> how can we introduce more entries and, and escape hatches into Nix? Right, allow people to that beautiful graphic that I had before, come in somewhere, but leave before they have to finish everything. So for instance, more sandbox learning, that's something that's very kind of starting to be common in the general industry. I come in, I can play around, I can feel the power, and then I can understand why, why I want to use it. Uh, more practice projects, partial integrations of Nix, like I said, and really mechanisms to help us help them test Nix out, right, take it for a test drive. So this is the generality of strong Nix. I think this is a lot of, you know, you guys ask questions about the board and what we're trying to do. This is a big part of what we're trying to do, and this is a, the reason I'm talking about it is because we're not going to be able to do all of this without all of you, right? So I want to kind of start building up and, and, and collaborating on things in that area. Now, some of the other things that we've been doing is we've been, uh, oh, click the wrong place. <coughs> there are successful open source projects that we can learn from. Some more, some less. But again, we're not the first open source. So we've started talking to a few. And uh, we wanted to share kind of some of the key takeaways that were shared from it. So we talked to Plone, Linux, Rust, Haskell, presidents, PMs, chairwomen's, chairs of the board, and really just kind of started asking them, you know, what worked, what didn't, what would you, I think the main question that I really appreciated was, if you could do it all over again, what would you change, right? What would, what would have set you up for more success or given you less pain or potentially skipped a, a failing point? And I think the things that, that most stood out, at least to me from those conversations or, or to us, were these six things. So I'm going to kind of just run through them. And by the way, I do, I do at some point, once we have time, just plan to release all the, the notes from the interviews. Um, I think one of the key things that came in and we've been discussing it is that the foundation serves the project and community, and the community is served by the project. Right, so the concept here, and I know it's a ambiguous one, it's very macro, but the concept here is that the foundation, that's the core principle of it. And again, why am I emphasizing this for probably the 10th time across the two days? We can't do this without you helping us understand what this means, right? Now, make sure that the Nix community stays at Greenfield. By the way, I, I replaced Nix, I think, with 
Rust here, just to make it more sense, stays a greenfield that anyone that wants to join. I don't know how many folks kind of understand the depth of this statement. Greenfield means that at any time for decades to come, anyone coming into Nix will be able to easily bootstrap from the ground whatever they want to do with it. Make it always accessible, always welcoming, and keep it that way. Integrate intentional priorities and plans, make it explicit. So I think one of the other concepts that came up was that a lot of these communities benefited from starting to think about where are we going and how can we be intentional about it? How can we collect that feedback, right? I think in other terms, it might be called kind of like the product cycle, but looking at our open source and if it was a product that we're trying to offer to these people that haven't been blessed with Nix. Um, invest into empowering collaboration across the community. So teams, so I'll touch on that in a second, and we also touched on it yesterday, but the whole concept of team empowerment was really also strengthened by, I think, talking to both Rust and Plone, and I'll touch on it again soon. Drive, I like this one, drive the right awareness to the world. Nix principles. We don't have to force you to use Nix tomorrow. But I think another big gap that we have today in getting that inflection point even further along the road is the principles of Nix, right? Reproducibility and the things that we mentioned yesterday, do other people understand it? Do they know why, why it's impactful and why they need it? And I think we do this insanely well, but keep it up in terms of prioritizing like the strong community ethos and, and the culture of, of Nix itself. Jumping into empowering teams alpha. I know some of you probably haven't seen it. We posted a, a little post about it this week out of all the Nick's craziness. <coughs> really the goal that we kind of came into with empowering, with the whole team empowerment concept, and I think everyone touched on it, came from the surveys, came from people talking about it for probably years. And, and just came from the general need within the community. So the, the idea here is that we want to improve the functioning and the impact of all of you by giving you the tools you need and, and, and setting you up for success and also giving you direct actionable support from the board and the foundation, of course. So what we hope this will achieve for us is that we hope that it will create a scenario where the community and the teams in it have clear mandates and responsibilities, but also have clear ownership. I personally believe that in a lot of instances, that is the path to being empowered and being able to do what needs to be done, right? Be, having that ownership or being whatever that mechanism is, but just you knowing that, you know what, marketing team, I think this is a very easy one. They own the website, right? So they're they have an idea, they want to test it out, they can roll it out and, and do it, but we need to spread that out to a lot of other areas and a lot of other places so individuals can just come in and not be stuck in a loop of approvals all the time. We can make mistakes, but it's better to make a mistake than to be kind of like held back in, in some sort of status quo waiting for something. Reducing overlap, so ideally through creating transparency and better communications, people will be able to contribute, but also people will be able to know what's being worked on and what they shouldn't. Not shouldn't, but don't have to. Um, like I said, direct board support and funding, and I think one of the main concepts that we also talked about is removing bus factor, right? So if we wanna look at it in the positive light and not in the bus factor light, there's a few people here, some of them in the room, that if they win the lottery and decide to completely disappear from the surface of the earth, we'll have a few uh, sleepless nights to figure out what the hell we're doing. So going into the empowering teams, we came up with a tiered model. Sorry, actually Rust and Plone and a few other communities came up with a tiered model. We added a third tier. Um, their model had community and critical. Our model has community, formal, and critical. <coughs> the whole concept of why the hell do we even have tiers is because in order to give, we have to create some sort of structure, otherwise we'll be in a loop of, okay, where, you know, this one's asking, this one's asking, do we go there? It has to have some sort of prioritization. So starting off with the community, very point blank. This is the community today, with just a bit more support. It means everyone and anyone can open the team, 
a collaboration, do whatever you need to do. But now we want to make sure that you guys also have access to the website, right? Some sort of like team creation template that will maybe help you out, just get your thoughts in, in, a, <coughs> excuse me, in a structured way. And beyond that, we also plan to introduce just in general, start collating like a Nix team knowledge base where we have so many teams and so many people doing incredible work. I think uh, Valentin's gonna talk about documentation very soon, but he's been creating templates and has been creating like these things for the team itself. The Nix team with uh, Teofan, there's a lot of things that if we just ported them out into a template, when I wanna come in and create a team, it will be much easier. So that's, that's generally the community, I think, some of the examples we had of these teams were like Emacs, Static Builds, Mac OS, right? But really, it's anything and everything. Formal. So formal is the middle tier that we introduced. Most of the communities we spoke with had community and critical. Critical, I'll jump into that in a second, but critical is like, if that team disappears, they win the lottery and go, we're in deep shit. Formal is the middle tier. Formal is... We don't want to have such a huge gap between, oh, these are the critical teams that we think are critical and we support and everyone else, Greenfield, great. We wanted to have an opportunity for, the, for folks to move into like a middle tier where it's still very impactful, but if they disappear, we're not, we're not going to be you know, not sleeping for two weeks and still give them the support that they need. Some examples of formal teams is like, you know, for instance, uh, the Nix team or the Doc team or teams that are directly impacting the trajectory of, of Nix itself, but we'll be, you know, we won't need to kind of chaos firefighting mode if, if something happens or something is delayed. A little bit more about what this means in terms of the support that we plan to give. So we plan to release a, a, Nix, a Nix Foundation funding mechanism to all of these formal teams and beyond, so formal and critical. If you need funding, if you need to do meetups, hackathons, you need resources for your teams, that's something that we want to introduce. Non-monetary support. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Non-monetary support. So going beyond that, right? We talked, you saw the board yesterday. There's people that are actively involved. We have board observers. We hope to have more as well. We want to be able to, like the, the board is going to be actively taking time from their plates and if formal teams or critical teams need us or just need general support, we'll be the first to raise our hands and kind of provide that SLA to all of these teams that will be there if, if, if needed. And of course, just like some smaller things like added visibility across channels, so like the formality, right, the website, the social medias, the discourses, and, and, and really kind of working together to, on that advocation piece. Um, so that's what we're providing, and in order to do what we said in terms of empowering the teams and making sure that the teams get stronger, we're also starting to alpha test. By the way, this is all alpha, it's a big there. We're testing this out, so we'd love the feedback, but we want to also kind of provide guidelines to responsibilities and accountabilities that we think teams should have in order to, to be at a higher level. So some of the things we've been thinking about is like tracking mem membership and having a point of contact. Uh, Clear ownership statement. So why does this team exist? So others can understand and kind of pr provide that transparency. Long-term vision, public issue tracker, and then just you know general ops. Like have all your meetings on the on the Nix calendar, so others can join, know about it, know its recurrence, and who's there. Moving over to the last critical teams. So again, like I said earlier, those are teams that if they disappear tomorrow morning, we need to figure things out. Um, the idea there is to both have all the formal capacities of the previous ones, but then introduce a few more. One is direct commitment of the board to be involved, either as a contributor to that team or as someone that is like at a, you know, like an army 12-hour response time, like something happens, the board is involved, and also as an escalation path. So all critical teams, you know, like a question I can ask is like, if you need to escalate something that is blocking Nix, where do you go? Just making sure that that's very well defined and there is a definitive stopping point in terms of if that person doesn't answer and that person doesn't answer, here's my phone number or here's like someone that is from the board that is gonna jump into this no matter the time, the hour, where they're at. 
quarterly plans and retros, roadmaps, and really these are parts that we want to help with. Some of the teams that we've been kind of looking at to alpha test this with is like infra, and we also imagine the RFC team potentially being in that mix. <coughs> and really that's it. So the whole concept of empowering teams right now, it's in an alpha phase. We release an initial concept and idea in a post. We want you guys to give us that feedback, and I think I've already started seeing people comment. Apologies for not responding. It's been Nixcom. Um, get involved if you care about it, if you have ideas, and, and that's how we, we kind of go from there. And last, Nick's community power. So I can't state this enough. The only way that this works is if we have, you know, if we're able to reach like an aligned friend where we're all plow plowing through these things. So really how we do this, right, we're trying, I think I'm going back to that graphic, we're trying to do quite a bit, and we all want to see Nix grow, and I think that I am super bullish on the fact that Nix can take over the world. We can do quite a few things that are going to be, you know, if I told this today to a non-Nix developer, they would probably laugh at my face. Why do you need containers? I think we had a lot of container talks. But to do so, it's, you know, there's a cliche kind of point of like it takes a village. It probably takes like an entire citadel of like 50,000 people, but who's counting? Again, thank you, and happy to kind of move to questions. Thank you, Juan. <coughs> thank you, Juan. There we go. Are there any questions? Yeah. I'll save you the walk, because you've been walking a lot. Ron, I like what you're doing. It's great. You, you're studying, you're talking to Rust, you're talking to Haskell. Have you talked to Red Hat? Have you talked to Suse? Have, have you talked to these people about growing an operating system? Yes. So, I mean, I've, I've, I've personally talked to Red Hat and Suse Linux, but I think that's a good point that we can kind of explore more of how they took, I think they took it at a different approach. Yeah. More at a commercial approach, but I think that there's probably a lot of learnings that we can get from well, it. To me, it was commercial takeover. Yeah. So basically, these these were independent companies, and then, then big money came in, and then these companies changed. And uh, Nix is kind of my little ba baby passion, and it ain't my first rodeo. I've been in it. I'm the oldest Nixer in the room by a long, long way, right? And I just don't want that the repeating of history. So talk to them. And see where the. Uh, what would you ask them? Eh? What would you ask them? Uh, why did you sell out? Why didn't you just keep keep going? Red, and, uh, Red Hat. Yeah. What do you count them as selling? But I'm I'm confused. Well, we'll talk it offline, man. You know. Okay. I don't want to bore you. No, no, I'm. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. When I first came to Nixcon, uh, I was a newbie, and I don't, it's only newbies in the room that have never used Nix before. So I'm running the newbie track unofficially upstairs in, uh, it's 14 flights up the stairs. And if you want to learn about what reproducibility is and uh, Elko's amazing work, then I'll be up there all day because I've got to work. So uh, come, come drop in. So. Sorry to steal the state. closer to your face. Um, so I have actually an objection uh, on, on the criticality of teams. So I, I think that the marketing team should absolutely not be critical. And also the RFC team is not critical because simply I, th I think as a community, we are not ready yet to take the influx of new users that we would produce if we had successful marketing. What do you think about that? <laughs> Two things. This is why we've been butchering this topic like hell for the last few days. And this is why I put alpha in big, bold letters earlier. I completely agree with that statement. I think we aren't ready, right? And if we want to be blunt about it, we, I think a conversation over beers is more fitting than a recorded talk. But I have some very kind of like strong opinions on, on our current status and uh, oh, Dan wants a good dinner. So, so I don't, so again, like very bluntly, we aren't ready. I think making the marketing team a critical team doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to open the floodgates to 10 million people tomorrow morning. It's going to be a, 
Yeah, sorry, Brian. Brian is like, you know, Brian's a hype guy, so. Um, it's gonna take us month, if not years, to reach a point where these teams are, are like, look at Linux, look at these other distributions and repositories, right? To get to the stage where we're ready for it. So it's something that has to happen. I mean, we have to start structuring them now, right? Because the inflection point, and, and we also don't control the inflection point. It's happening with or without us wanting it. We're seeing it. We didn't do, I mean, we did kind of do some things, but we didn't do like something grandiose and things have 5X, right? And people, like I said, the, the people that are coming in externally, some of them have an appetite for a one-time thing. They come in, they get scared, they get shell-shocked, and it's gonna be really tough to convince them to come back. So I think that's, that's my view, but you're right. Yeah, I agree. We, I think we should first fix uh, the basics, the substance that already is well explored and um, only then let people come and get a taste of that. Uh, but if you have more concrete thoughts, please share it with us. Right now, why not? Yeah, no, I think, I, think I, shared, I just time. shared it. I ended up sharing it. Like my thoughts on how the inflection point is not something that we decide on, it, it happens. And it's something that is gonna be kind of tough for us to walk back from if we're not able to structure it correctly. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. A round of applause again for Ron. Could I ask the lightning speakers?